In this video I'm going to cover kinematics and I'm only going to cover it up to merit level. I'm going to leave the multiple step ones at, which are excellence for another time. So kinematics is the maths of motion and motion means distance travelled, velocity and acceleration. And velocity is the rate of change of distance. Velocity being speed but in a direction and speed is how fast you're moving for a certain time and acceleration is how much your speed is changing it's the rate of change of velocity now we know that we differentiate to find a rate so we can do that in kinematics as well we have distance we differentiate it we get velocity we have velocity we differentiate it we get acceleration and because that holds, the reverse holds as well. We anti-differentiate acceleration to get velocity, and we anti-differentiate velocity to get distance. The key to remembering that is that velocity is the rate of change of distance. So you differentiate distance to get velocity, and from that piece of information, all the rest of it falls into logical step. The differentiation takes place with respect to time, so our variable that is x on a graph becomes t, time, for kinematics. Otherwise, everything else remains the same. So, kinematics, the maths of motion. Velocity is the rate of change of distance. That's the key feature. And acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. As I mentioned before, all three are measured with respect to the same direction. There is some direction determined positive, and everything else in the opposite direction is negative. Minus 5 distance means 5 behind the starting point. There's a specific word, if you're moving at a positive speed but it is reducing, you have negative acceleration, it's called deceleration. So we'll do a couple of simple ones to show how it works. Here we ask the velocity of an object after 5 seconds if its distance is given by that function there. Velocity is a rate of change, so we're going to take our function of distance and we're going to differentiate it to get our velocity. So our velocity function is our differentiated distance function and it is 4 minus t. The x value drops away, the 2 comes down, 2 times a half is 1, and the power becomes 1 less, so it becomes 4 minus t. And we want the velocity at t is equal to 5, because it asks for the velocity after 5 seconds. So we stick t is equal to 5 into our velocity function. 4 minus 5 is minus 1, and the ball is travelling at minus 1 metres per second. Which is the same as 1 metres per second backwards. Another one. Find the distance an object travels in the first 10 seconds if its velocity is given by that function there, 3t plus 6. Now the velocity is measured in metres per second, but in fact you're not asked to do units generally in these questions. Anti-differentiating velocity gives distance. So we anti-differentiate 3t plus 6 and that means we take the t and add an extra power becomes t squared and we take that 2 and divide it under the 3 becomes 1.5. The 6 gains a t and because we're anti-differentiating we get the constant of integration. So before we go any further, we have to work out what the constant of integration is. We're told in context how far the object travels in the first 10 seconds, so we're going to start from 0 metres. Distance at time is 0 is equal to 0. So we stick that into this, 0 is equal to 1.5 0 squared plus 6 times 0, so c must equal 0. That's quite standard. When you start from zero distance or zero velocity, you'll find that the constant of integration is often zero. So we have our function of distance, 
this t is a half t squared plus 6t and we are asked how far it travels in the first 10 seconds so into our function of distance we we'll stick our time and 1.5 times 10 squared plus 6 times 10 is 210 the ball travels 210 meters in the 10 seconds 